So the only other thing I think we need to do at this point is maybe throw on the backdrop a little bit. So let's just, uh, let's create a backdrop. I'm going to stop the render right now and we can go back out to our object level and create that. So I'm just going to zoom out here. So we're going to use this camera and kind of parent a grid to this camera and uh, push it back in Z space. So I'm going to just, uh, let's make some room over here. I'm going to type uh, uh, grid. So I'm going to hit tab key, type grid. And that's going to throw down a grid in my scene. I'm just going to give myself a little bit more space to look at my grid here. And what I can do is since I don't have keep position when parenting ticked on, if I wire my camera into the grid, you can see that the, the grid snaps to my, um, my camera one right here. I'm going to just uh, maybe hide camera two for right now. So I'm just going to turn off the visibility there. But um, I've got camera one here. It's, it's parented to it. And um, if I just uh, make camera one visible, you can kind of see, yeah, camera one right there in the middle of that grid. I'm going to now grab the grid and I'm going to hold down the, uh, the control key and rotate it. Um, whoop, I'm going to rotate it like 90 degrees. So yeah, it's totally perpendicular to the camera right now. And then just pull it way back in um, Z space with respect to the uh, camera itself. And then um, maybe I'll just double check by looking through camera one. Yeah, it looks like it's covering that entire view. So that's good. And then here, um, if I were to unwire this by holding down the Y key to get the scissors and then slicing through with my mouse, um, you can see that the the grid moves position because we we didn't check keep positioning parenting on after we did the parenting. So I'm going to hold control. I'm going to hit control Z to undo that and then click keep position when parenting and then I'll right click this uh, wire here and say disconnect. You can see the grid stays exactly where it, uh, we put it. So now let's create a um, material for this background. I'm going to just uh, bring up the render view and also jump over to the matte context and create another uh, RS material builder. RS material builder like so. And we're going to call this the uh, background. And I'm going to jump inside there. And we've got our standard material here. I'm just going to set this to another orange color by doing my usual thing by selecting red and then just nudging this uh, green value off to the right to keep a kind of a nice orange color there. And then let's grab the grid. I'm going to rename this background while I'm thinking about it. And I will uh, drag this new background material onto it. And Let's uh, let's start a render on that now. Let's so fire off a render here, see what we get. And here you can see that starting to illuminate. Um, it looks like our, our beam doesn't actually, our, our background is too close for our beam. So our beam is kind of intersecting with it. So we're going to need to move our background back a little bit further. So let's do that real quick. I'm just going to stop the render here and split this into a two views side by side. And in this second view on the left here, I'm going to move over and grab my background and just push it back until I notice that this red line on the right hand side is uh, fully visible. So I'm just going to grab this background, pull it back. You can see my red line is growing until it goes off screen down here in the corner. So the red lines all the way across our grid just needs to be made a little bit bigger. So I'm going to grab, maybe I'll just grab this uh, scale button over here and just kind of stretch that out in the uh was that the z direction and also in the x direction just to make sure it fills up the uh frame and then let's uh let's render another frame one thing i'm seeing here is that i've got this it looks like it's catching a reflection in the previous render i don't really see that in this render but what i do want to do is just um disable any reflections on it because I know that I just want this background to be sort of a diffuse kind of color. So let's just turn off the reflection weight, bring the reflection weight down to zero. And then we'll just brighten this up by hitting it with a spotlight. I'm going to turn off the render. And here let's create another um, RS light. So I'm going to hit tab, say RS light. And this is going to create an area light. And maybe I'll do kind of a similar thing here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually wire the background into the light. So now you can see that the light snaps to the center of the background. And here I'm going to kind of do the opposite thing of what I did with the, uh, with the, with the background plane itself. So I'm going to just grab the light and select this manipulator here. And I will uh, bring this back towards our view a little bit. So I'm just going to hide this light behind our main object here. And 
hold down the uh, control key and rotate that 90 degrees so it's pointing directly at the background and then I'll just change this RS light shape to be a let's say a disc and then let's just reduce the spread a little bit so that it's just sort of like a spotlight um, kind of um, projecting on the background right from behind our object so let's just turn the render back on and see what we get now and we can see that the, that definitely spotlight is definitely working. It's just a little bit too intense. So I'm going to um, increase the spread quite a bit. Let's increase the spread to, uh, let's see here. I'm just going to crank that up to about 0.5-ish. And you can see it's um, filling out a lot more, but it's just a little bit too bright. So let's just come back up here to the intensity. And let's try an intensity of about 10. 